There's a light in the sky Rising in the air There's a feeling so strong It's time to light the fire Like a bright shining light Hello and welcome to the House of Wellness. My name is Luke Darcy and it's always a pleasure to be joined by these three superstars. Luke Heinze Hines, Rachel Finch, Joe Stanley. Welcome oh, guys. Hi. Hey, 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 happy Father's Day. Thank you. Yeah. you and GQ over of there. Of course. Yeah. 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 Yes. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there on this uh, Sunday. Yes, and you're spending it here with us, Darcy. You've got four kids. I hope that means you've got four breakfasts in bed. <laughs> they uh, <laughs> seriously need to lift their game, my four kids. Mm. They oh. uh, need to um, provide a bit more. I've got a couple of nice cards, a couple of things from the Father's Day store, which I paid oh, yeah. for and were half eaten oh, by yeah. the time they <laughs> uh, arrived. Oh, the, the, the thought was there though, yes. uh, Rach, which yeah. was nice. <laughs> now, to celebrate Father's Day today, we're looking at all things men. Heinz, you caught up with a support group for dads who are helping each other to better relate mate to mate. I like this. Yeah, that's exactly right, Duff. We talk about it each and every week. The need for men to open up and talk to each other, and it really is beginning to take hold, guys. And you're also on the trail of prostate health, Heinz. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's the most common cancer affecting males and on topic of men opening up you'll be amazed at the honesty of the couple in this story who are just so brave in sharing some very intimate details about their prostate mm. journey. We are also going to be brushing up on the facts of facial hair, Rach. Are you a fan of the beard or clean shaven? What do you prefer? I am a three day growth girl. Oh, okay. Not too messy, not too clean. What do you reckon of this? Uh, right. That's probably one more day to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Work on it. Yeah. Good night. It is no. <laughs> testosterone fueled day today on the House yes. of Wellness. And to kick it off, there's no doubt that being a dad is challenging, rewarding, and can make you pull your hair out at times as well. But it's also a lot of fun, Joe. I mean, you've got to just laugh along with the punches, <laughs> don't, don't you, Dad? <laughs> but uh, no one knows this more than two Aussie dads and their best mate who've turned their experiences with their ethnic parents into a hit comedy act that's going gangbusters on stage and online. You know what I can't wait for? Mm -hmm. I can't wait for Father's Day this year. Mm -hmm. I get the best presents every year. Runners, day spa, you made me a little toy and stuff. I can't wait. What'd you get? I got a salt shaker. Oh, well, at least it's That's something. Right. No, no, the salt shaker from the kitchen table. He just, he just wrapped it and gave it to me. Oh, well, I just thought it counts. Well, everyone loves salt, you know. Correct, so. yeah. Well, I'm really upset. I got nothing for Father's Day last year. Nothing. But you, you haven't got a kid, man. Oh, yeah. You know, it was different from the days when we were kids. I remember when I used to give my dad presents. I used to just get lectures about spending money. Where you go? Stay home and save your money! When I was in your age, I worked ten days in one week. When I was your age, we was so poor we only eat the skin of a rabbit. When I come here, I had a one suitcase. When I come to this country, I only had for one shoe. One year, we got our dad a coffee machine because he kept running around the house asking people to make him coffee. You know, there's little pod coffees. Never used it. Someone make me coffee, please! Oh, my coffee, please! So I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't matter what I bought that, he was never happy. Even when I was six years old, I bought him a red tape measure. I thought he was going to love it. He just yelled at me and told me to buy property. No spend your money, buy a house! Are you dumb? What are you, dumb? When I was at your age, my toys was a rocks! Now, for a whole year, Dad was complaining about the phone not working properly. Mm. We bought him a new one. Didn't make a difference. Somebody get the phone! Hello? Hello? It's Hello? I don't know yours! Is... Mate, lucky we're not like our dads, huh? I oh, know. Could you imagine? No, I can't. <laughs> Mate, I'm not going to wait till Father's Day to tell my son how hard I work. I tell him every day. Hey, you want to come with me this weekend? I'm bringing my kid to an auction. Can someone get me a coffee, please? Well, that's brothers Joe and Carlo <laughs> Salinitri and their mate Andrew Manfrey, also known as Sushi Mango. Oh, and they have amassed more than 70 million views online and wow. star in TV Whoa. shows and ads. Their show Fifty Shades of Ethnic is playing around <laughs> the country, so head to the House of Wellness website to find out more. Well, the Father's Day vibe continues after the break. We look at a group taking revenge on their daggy dads <laughs> in the wardrobe <laughs> stakes. That's all coming up right here on the House of Wellness.
welcome back. Today we're celebrating all things men and dads. Joe, Rach, I want to ask you a question. How do yeah. your partners go in dressing the kids? My husband, Michael, is pretty good. You've got to remember, though, he spent 20 years as a ballroom dancer. Oh. And he's seen enough sequins to see you should. <laughs> <laughs> so he's really good. That's right. I usually just pick up the first thing off the pile and mm. I just put it on. It's a patience thing, so he's definitely a lot better than me. What about Dad's Joe? <laughs> oh, well, my daughter has dressed herself since she could walk, basically. Wow. There's no chance we could dress her. She would say, uh-uh, put that back, I'm wearing this. But Daz is pretty good at braiding her hair. Wow. Which I'm terrible at. That's he, difficult. He learnt off YouTube. Oh. <laughs> Which, you know, that's how I would learn too. Yeah. I don't yeah. have a clue. I remember Sienna being about four and Beck was away and she said, I need a high pony to go to kindergarten or school and I was like, I'm in a world of trouble here. This is going to be... Got there in the end. Did you know what it was when no, she first No, no idea at all. But, uh, the pony was progress. there yeah. as well yeah. as the late, late note for school. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Her dads can make some pretty dubious fashion choices at times. Playful, a parenting platform in the US, comes up with some pretty helpful hacks for parents. The idea where the kids get to dress their dads is a ripper. <laughs> you need to take a look at this. I'm Avery Lardy. I'm eight years old. I'm Adam Lardy, and I'm 35 years old. My name is Elliot Kelly. My name's Anaya, and I'm six years old, and I'm gonna dress my dad. What do you think about the way your dad dresses now? Perfect. Good morning. This is day one. Good. You look so great. They fucked me up. Oh. Wow, what a great outfit Avery put me in. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to the beach. Unfortunately, I have to go to work. You look ridiculous. You don't have your dress shoes and dress socks on, though. No, no way, man. Good, 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 bad. If only Avery could just find it in her heart to put a decent pair of shoes on me, these outfits would have been great. It's day number three. I have a surprise for Daddy. I hope he likes it. What is it? Daddy. Yeah, bought this? I wanted Daddy to be mismatched to Daddy. Is it a little uh, warm out today for this long sleeve shirt, Avery? Are you ready to see Daddy? Yes! All right, Daddy, come out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> the beautiful Tub Tim looks nothing like a Tub Tim. As you can see, my daughter hooked me up. Um, I actually like this shirt because it has turtles, and uh, turtles is my favorite pet. So uh, she hit the spot right here when she got me this shirt. Day, day number five. Look, look at this one. Now it's time for our shoes. outfit need a bow tie? It doesn't really match. This is the worst outfit yet. We're back. It's been a week. It was very crazy. Yeah, there were a lot of highs and a lot of lows. She came up with some crazy ideas, but I think at the end of the day, she kept me cool. Daddy was cursing more by the end of the week. <laughs> You know what, I do think, and my husband says, to be the father of a daughter is the greatest blessing you could ever have. Mm -hmm. And for him, that means willingly getting your nails painted, oh. Oh. willingly walking out of the yeah. house with makeup <laughs> on, whatever he's Willow's brave. decided to do. Well, he's like, it's, it's daddy-daughter time. What a gorgeous thing to yeah. do. Yeah. Has Sienna ever, ever painted your nails? That hasn't happened, but <laughs> I get a lot of direct feedback from Sienna, whether I like it or not. Not always complimentary, Rach, I'm here to say. Yeah. But, uh, I always talk about being a father to a daughter and being a father to three boys is almost, you can't describe the difference because I've got no idea how to handle the things that Sienna throws my way. <laughs> so you just have to absorb it yeah. and, and learn on the job. I love it. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Hey, up next, we're going to look at the number one health concern facing all Aussie men. But first, you might have noticed that ramen restaurants are the flavour of the month, Heinz. Mate, absolutely. I love a good ramen. And contrary to popular belief, 
the ramen originated in China but was made super trendy by the Japanese. Yeah. And we're going to catch up with Zoe now with her ridiculously good ramen. <laughs> beautiful easy ramen pork soup and I'm using bone broth. Normally bone broth would take 36 hours so it's so easy to use the powdered bone broth and it's so versatile. It's got such a lovely earthy salty flavour to it but it's really all about the collagen which we know is so important when it comes to bone health, skin health and just giving that extra bit of goodness into our diet. I've whisked that together, and now I'm going to add my ginger, a little bit of soy, and I'm also adding mirin. I've already marinated my pork loin with a little bit of soy, a bit of mirin, and just all those other gorgeous Asian flavours. I'm going to cook it for about four minutes each side. Once your pork is cooked, just let it rest slightly, and then you just want to thinly slice. And then it's all about assembling all the amazing garnishes and other flavours that accompany a ramen soup. So just lay it in the middle. And the last ingredient is your seaweed, your nori. Oh, so easy to take bone broth and make it into this delicious ramen soup. And the good thing about bone broth, you can add it to any soups or any curries and you get the added benefit of good health. Watching the House of Wellness, prostate cancer is one of the biggest health concerns for Australian men with a staggering one in five males affected in their lifetime. And thankfully, Das, it's not all doom and gloom, though. The good news is prostate cancer is also one of the most successfully treated cancers if detected early. But what do you do if you get it? How it affects us guys is a mystery to most of us, mainly because we don't need to know unless it happens to us. Thanks to Ellen and Fiona for sharing this very personal story. Ellen White was only 49 when he was first told he had prostate cancer. Back in 2000, it was considered low risk, but at that time in 2000, prostate cancer meant the gland's got to come out straight away. And I pushed back, said, that's not coming out. So I got a second opinion, for want of a better word. A lot of to and fro in, and I eventually decided to do what's called access surveillance. Active surveillance is a self-monitoring treatment. Eating good food, exercising and getting regular blood tests. It worked perfectly for 10 years. And then things took a turn for the worse. So he just sat down and he said, the cancer's back. I was terrified. I thought, oh my God, my husband's going to die. We'd only been married two years, so I yeah. can understand Fiona's concerns. But I again wanted to step back and look at my options. And I really wanted him to get something done sooner rather than later because I was afraid. I really was afraid that the cancer would um, metastasize. Confronted with the reality of surgery and its side effects, Alan was forced into making a decision about his next course of treatment. I was disappointed that I'd somehow dropped the ball somewhere in that process of taking care of myself. So I was giving myself a pretty hard time and I remember walking down the beach one day because it was summer and I don't know why I wasn't swimming and I just broke down and cried and swore and thought oh, I'll just take the bloody thing out. I'd had enough because I was between a rock and a hard place. So Alan booked in for the robotic surgery to remove his prostate. The two major side effects is incontinence for an X period of time. I'm wearing pads to because you leak, you just cannot feel it. And the other thing overnight is that erectile dysfunction, men cannot get an erection and it really impacts on couples. It affects the way they engage. It changes their life. It changes their life. So we call transitioning to a new normal. The new normal took some time for Alan and Fiona. First 12 months, Fiona and I commuted and talked about how to be intimate. And um, Fiona would often say, you just need to relax. You don't have to you know, get it up straight away. Um, we were using <laughs> Viagra at the time, which gave me a flush in the wrong head for a while. And that got better over time. On the positive side, there was something that we discovered ourselves that we didn't know about beforehand. 
it is possible for a man to have an orgasm without an erection. Mm. This was something we didn't know and we discovered and thought, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. So that was one of the few positive things we discovered. Another major positive, though, is that Alan is now in remission and they have both adapted to their new normal. It has changed our lives forever. The prostate cancer life before and life after are nothing like one another. We have learned a great deal about one another and we have learned to work together and mm. it has probably brought us closer. Yep. <laughs> Well, it's definitely an issue that needs to be uh, talked about. And thanks to men like Alan coming forward, those conversations are happening more and more. Joining us now, prostate cancer expert from the Peter McCallum Cancer Institute is Professor Penelope Schofield. Welcome. Hello, how thanks. are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, almost 20,000 Australian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer this year. And it seems to be increasing. Is there an interesting or an accurate explanation as to why? Yeah, there's a couple of reasons. I'm um, probably the most important reason is that a lot more Australian men are getting um, prostate specific antigen tests or PSA tests and that's actually diagnosing what's called low risk prostate cancer um, which is possibly many of those cancers would actually never really escape the, can uh, the prostate oh. and never actually bother men. So that's probably the main reason. The other reason is, is that we've cured a lot of the diseases that were knocking blokes off and uh, the older oh. a man gets, the more likely they are to get prostate cancer eventually. OK, so we saw that Alan has thank goodness, successfully beaten his cancer. What are the common treatments and what are the other after effects that you might experience? So that there are two common treatments. First of all is prostatectomy, which is getting the prostate surgically removed. Mm -hmm. And the second treatment is radiotherapy. And that can either be external beam or little seeds been placed into the prostate um, which release the radiation. And so the common side effects for those treatments are erectile dysfunction, um, so that can either be partial or total, so having a much softer erection or a total rectal dysfunction or urinary or bowel incontinence. And clearly all of those mm. side effects are very distressing for men. Mm. Are some men more at risk than others? And what can we do to protect ourselves? Yeah, some men are more at risk. So genetically, yep. um, African um, men are more at risk than Caucasian or Asian men. Okay. Um, some men are more at risk if there's a family history. So, yep. for instance, if your dad, your brother, your uncle had cancer, then you're going to be more at risk. And there are also lifestyle factors. So there's increasing evidence that if uh, men are overweight or obese, um, they are at greater risk. So one of the things potentially you can do to reduce your risk is actually have a healthy diet, exercise, yeah. maintain a healthy body weight. I mean, I think that public health people are a bit boring because whenever we get on telly, <laughs> doesn't matter what the problem is, does it? <laughs> yeah. You know, we tell you the same thing. Eat things. well, exercise. Eat well, exercise, get a good night's sleep. But it's interesting you say about uh, family as well, asking the right questions and being aware of your surroundings and yeah. who else. Yeah. And let's have Let's be open about talking about it. I think that's the other thing blokes do, mm. is blokes aren't comfortable about talking about health issues. Yeah. No. Can you tell us about the Peter Mac Cancer Institute Navigate trial? We realised there was a big problem. Men who were diagnosed with low-risk prostate cancer really didn't understand the treatment options. Mm. Mm. And they were obviously terrified mm. about the diagnosis. They were shocked. But they were very confused. There are three treatment options, active surveillance, surgery and radiotherapy. All of them have similar survival outcomes but very different pros and cons. It's a very difficult nav um, area to navigate mm. for men. So Alan and I got together and he co-designed this website. Wow. It's a website called Navigate. It's designed by men for men mm. um, to understand what are all the options 
and then take them through a decision-making process, them and their partners, so that they can make the treatment selection which actually aligns with their own mm. values, their lifestyle. He's a courageous man. He's, He's <laughs> very, very open, isn't he? It was a, quite uh, an interesting story. Can I ask who's eligible for this trial, Penny? So it's anyone who has been diagnosed with low-risk um, prostate cancer and the clinician says is eligible for active surveillance. Mm -hmm. And so men, men anywhere around Australia can refer themselves into the trial. We would then contact their treating clinician, check that they have got low-risk prostate cancer and um, active surveillance is one of their treatment options. And then by flip of a coin, they would either be randomised to receiving this website or the best available standard care, which I believe is uh, the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia website. We've got okay. all the details, Joe, on our House of Wellness uh, website as well, so go there to check out if you are eligible. Super, super important. So, but Penny, I want to know, if we can take it back a step, um, who should get checked for prostate cancer and how is that process done? If you have a family history of prostate cancer or you've got symptoms, things are not quite right down there. You know, there, there's a lot of frequency of urination, starting and stopping when um, you're urinating or there's blood in the urine or mm. semen. Things might not be quite right. That's the time to go to your GP. It's really a very simple test. So there'd be a blood test uh, to look for um, high PSA readings oh. or a digital rectal examination. Mm -hmm. um, I know that most men kind of their toes curl when, <laughs> yes. you know, you say digital rectal examination. <laughs> Got a bit of squirming oh. here. <laughs> the legs um, are coming yeah, up. Yeah, a little bit of... <laughs> and that's the right position. There we go. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Um, oh, so it excellent. really is quite a simple I'm ready. procedure. Um, the, the GP just pops a uh, rubber glove on. The man pulls the knees up to the chest yep. and um, it's just up the backside and they just have a little bit of a feel around yep. just to make <laughs> sure okay? everything <laughs> feels normal. <laughs> now, for men out there who are having these symptoms, really don't delay. Mm. Go to your GP and most likely it's not prostate cancer. There's a whole other a range of things that can explain the urine or the blood in the semen or urine. So really don't be afraid. Just go and get prostate cancer ruled out. Because obviously early detection is really important. Yep. Critical. Yeah. Absolutely critical. Thank you for that, Penny. It's a very simple test, as you said, and can be life-saving. So all men need to be more vigilant when it comes to tackling this disease. Penelope, thanks again for joining us right here on the House of Wellness. Thank you. Thank you. While there's still so much unknown about preventing prostate cancer, a healthy, active lifestyle and good nutrition are at the front line when it comes to protection. Gerald, what herbs or minerals can help men in particular stay fighting fit? There's a few darts, but I want to draw your attention to prostate awareness. I'm wearing this beautiful pin today and Rachel's <laughs> got her... Little um, wristband on as well, so we need to get on board here. Yeah, and I've learnt so much from Penny today, but one mm. thing that I did know was that zinc is incredibly important for good prostate health. It's the tissue, the organ, Rach, that is really, really rich in zinc, and we need adequate levels of zinc to maintain sperm health, so motility, structure, health of sperm, really important. So, Gerald, how would my husband know he's getting enough zinc? Michael's a young bloke, so he is probably fine. But the World Health Organisation, Rachel, tells us one in three people, one in three men, are zinc insufficient, have wow. poor levels of zinc. And it's important, remember that prostate health is usually starts with the person in your bed saying, I'm sick and tired of all the interruptions across the night. Mm. That involves prostate issues, and usually there's a zinc issue as well with that. Mm. And I would assume that eating foods really rich in zinc is a really good place to start. Meat, legumes, oyster, oyster meat is mm. magnificently rich in zinc and magnesium and a number of other minerals. So that's a good standby. So is there anything else that guys can do to maintain this optimum health? 
The other mineral really important, uh, Rach, is selenium, mm. which we get from our soil. So in theory, we eat it in our vegetables, anything that's grown in the soil. Unless we wash it off. Unless we wash it <laughs> off or the levels in the soil are poor. But an ideal combination then for sperm health, for prostate health, is oyster meat with plenty of zinc and selenium and often in a one-a-day capsule. Incredible. Always so insightful. Thank you Thank so you. much. Happy Father's Day and happy Grandfather's Day. Thank you, Rach. <laughs> the A to Z of Vitamins is brought to you by Go Healthy, New Zealand's number one premium supplement brand, now available in Australia. Welcome back. It's our Father's Day edition of the House of Wellness and the pressure on new parents can be intense. Mums have access to a lot of support groups, but generally there aren't too many outlets to help dads deal with what is an enormous life change, which is exactly why a bunch of Melbourne dads decided to change things up. I'd wanted to be a dad for such a long time and my wife and I struggled to have kids, but when it finally happened, it was incredible. Amazing experience and, um, yeah, awesome. Craig Turton is the kind of dad all kids deserve to have. But even though he makes it look easy, fatherhood is not without its challenges. And I know how much I struggled, uh, you know, when we first had kids and the workload at work, the weight of expectation as being a man was just beginning too much. And I think that's, uh, a lot of guys put so much pressure on themselves to be this certain person and be this certain way because that's what they were taught to do in the past. And it's just crap. It's absolute rubbish. Craig has always been interested in men's mental health, but it's one story that resonated like no other. The guest speaker says, so let me get this right. You're here with five mates, so you don't know 994 men in this room. So why, when I asked the question, have you attempted to take your own life twice? Why did you tell me in 994 men you don't know? And the guy looks at him and says, because you asked me, and breaks down. The guest speaker then turns to the, the five best mates and says, which one of you five, if any, thought that your mate here was struggling? And this is the bit that gets me. It, um, one, of the, one of them puts their hand up and says, I didn't think it was that bad. And, and that's the bit that gets me. Uh, the feeling of what it would be like to, to be sitting there looking up at your mate, not, not of having asked the question, Craig was moved to take action. He told the story to a few friends and together they decided to start the group 100 Words Mate to Mate. At its core is camaraderie, building a ball around, impromptu footy trips, but education is the framework. It's all about teaching men to have the difficult conversations. The idea is to go and have 100 words with your mate. If you think one of your mates is struggling, it is incumbent upon you to do something about it. It's not easy. Particularly if you're a shy person who doesn't like putting another mate on the spot, but inevitably we say, hey mate, are you okay? And he'll go, yep, I'm fine. Oh, good. And then you'll go, oh, okay, well I asked. We well, didn't really ask at all. It's about how you model the question and, and don't, don't give up. Like it's not just ask one question and that's it. It, it can't be just that. While you don't have to be a dad to join, fatherhood was a key motivator for the founders. I had a chat with uh, my son James, yep. uh, he's seven years old, and he uh, expresses love and uh, and friendship, you know, in equal measure. As he a doesn't, as a seven-year-old boy, he hasn't he hasn't got that stigma yet around, uh, you know, you don't you don't talk that way, yep. uh, man to man. It's interesting that as grown-ups, men don't do that as much, and uh, we sort of made the the point to each other that. You know, we'll keep that going uh, between he and I very much because, you know, that was the reason I joined 100 Words is in a few years that's going to be something that's really, really important for me to be able to see in his life is if anything's going on and to be able to have that conversation. This is 100 Words meet to meet. <laughs> for everyone involved in 100 Words, from do-good dads to the next generation of men they're raising, it's about sewing together a safety net and teaching each other how to use it. Kids just want to be told that they're loved. And that's no different from a man to a man, like a mate, mate, I love you. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, mate, I love you. Um, it just doesn't happen enough. 
Oh, that is so beautiful and such an important organisation. And I think for fathers, they do need that support network. If we expect them to step up and parent and also work and yeah. all those pressures, it's so important. Did you, Das, have a group of dads when you first became a father? No, nah, not as such. And look, I often talk about parenting has been the one thing you want to do better than anything in your life, mm. but there's really no uh, you know, book or, or mentoring or way to, to find out. Lucky coming out of the team sport environment, you have these really close friendships that I think are getting better and better about being more open, being more vulnerable. So I felt like I've you know, had some really close mates that you have mm. those conversations with, but you know, it's great to see. Traditionally, it's not what guys do, Heinz. We talk about this a lot. You, you, don't, you hide your emotions, you don't go deep and ask proper questions, but we're getting better at it, but there's still a fair way to go. Mm. Absolutely, and I'm actually not a father yet, so in my world, I'm still trying to get me right. Yes. And uh, I, don't, I can't imagine, mm. you know, the challenges that, you know, dads face, but with me, I'm still trying to, and I know this is a bit random, I'm still trying to learn how to look after my own teeth. <laughs> now, as you guys know... It's important. I'm getting a whole lot of work <laughs> done. Segway. Yeah. I've had six teeth out, and I probably didn't look after my teeth the best that I should have, so I'm catching up now. Okay. And I've got to say, initially I was really nervous, but it is incredible how far things have gone because there's no sweaty palms and nervous waiting rooms. Mm. You're out, there's technology, there's machines in there, and before you know it, you're done. But, you know, when it comes to brushing your teeth, I remember you mentioned yes. that you get into the bathroom with Willow, pump yes. the tunes, and it's a teeth brushing disco party. That's right. <laughs> Everything in our house comes with tunes, pretty much, and Willow's 10, so we just put on Spotify and away we go. And it really, you know, you've got to make it fun any way you can to get your kids to clean your teeth. Yeah, and I, uh, the best investment, as I told you guys earlier, was the Elsa electric toothbrush. <laughs> I mean, that has just solved, solved wonders in my house. <laughs> well, I found out that I have been brushing my teeth all this time the wrong no. way. No, seriously, take a look at this. Well, I wasn't expecting that. At least now I know where this bad breath problem comes from. I thought I had the teeth cleaning thing nailed. But one root canal and three fillings later, my dentist reckons I need to brush up on my skills. So from now on, there's no mucking around. I'm going straight for the big guns. A powerful sonic toothbrush that cleans five times better than the old manual job. The tip my dentist reckons is that it's all about technique. Position the brush at 45 degrees and then work along each tooth. Do the outside of the teeth first and then the inside. And the tops of the molars last. What's great is that the brush is doing all the work. Twice a day for two minutes, too easy. Well, that's news to me. I had no idea that uh, two minutes was the required time zone. Oh, that's so why you put on a two-minute song. <laughs> well, you <laughs> learn something on the House of Wellness every week. Mate, that's exactly right. I'm going to combine all of our tricks. I'm going to do it for two minutes. Yep. I'm going to do it to tunes. I'm going to play Let It Go from Frozen. Perfect. And my teeth will be looking absolutely fantastic. And I'll definitely be getting one of those super-duper brushes. For all right. Me. Speaking of brushes, facial fuzz will be our focus after the break. And the man known as the human headline, Darren Hitch, comes in to help us brush up on all things beards. Welcome back. Well, Rach, you mentioned earlier that uh, you like a three-day growth and, uh, on your man, uh, Michael. <laughs> How about uh, you, Joe? Has Dad's ever grown the beard? Are you a fan or not? Oh, well, I don't care. It's <laughs> <laughs> his oh, face. If he wants to grow a beard, he'd oh, let him oh, grow a beard. Just, that's, oh, can that's... you actually grow a beard? Yeah. Because I get bald patches. No, I did last summer. It was uh, scarily grey. Oh, and yeah. um, a little bit disconcerting. Not a great look for me, but no? uh, maybe one day. I reckon I might let it go. I like think it. facial hair is a real mark of a man's personality. Personality. You know, we get to do okay. so much with our fashion and makeup and jewellery, and you know, you've got to do something. Or a sign of laziness. It could be one or the other. And look, to be honest, be they long, short, well maintained, or rugged, bush ranger style, beards are sported by around 55% of men worldwide and are here to stay. Well, for the moment, anyway. For as long as men have shaved, many have bristled at facial hair, mm. while others sprouted with pride. Mm. Long before razors, men used animal teeth, clam shells or flint, and with no mirrors, mm. the results were rather patchy. Ah. Julius Caesar loved a smooth look, See. so his servants plucked the hairs from his face. 
Even though the straight blade was invented in the 18th century, the clean shave was out by the Victorian era. Doctors oh. recommended that big bushy beards Ooh. acted as filters against airborne germs in polluted cities. With the longest being grown by Hans Nenskett <laughs> at over 17 feet. Oh, yeah. However, this has since been debunked, as it's been found that men's beards carry more germs than dog's fur. Yet despite this, the hipster beard is still seen on many men in Australia. From the five o'clock shadow to the soup strainers, flavour savers, chin straps and everything in between, when it comes to facial hair, there are endless options to comb through. Well, he's known as a human headline for good reason. He's been an author, broadcaster and former senator who's been rocking a beard for the best part of 60 years. Welcome to Darren Inch. Hello, <laughs> Darren. Guys, thank Welcome. you. Uh, uh, Darren, good to catch up with you. And when I think you, I think a beard uh, immediately. I don't think I've ever seen you without one. Well, I've only ever been, well, apart from my teenage years, I was allowed a beard twice, I think. Once in New York when I was living there as a foreign correspondent, I shaved it off, walked into my office and somebody said, you look different. <laughs> You've had a haircut, you know, because... <laughs> <laughs> I have this theory that in the back of your mind you know what people look like. Mm. So when you see them, you don't actually look closely at them to yes. see if they've changed. You know? yeah. uh, the other time was the last time I was in jail, as they say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the last time I was in jail, I, uh, I shaved it off. Sort of a... Almost a bit of a protest thing, saying, well, it looked different. And I hated it. I looked like a fat Robert Mitchum. <laughs> you know, the, old, the old actor, you know. Um, and I, I, did, I felt naked, mm. shake, shaving it off. Um, but look, like most guys who grow beards when they're young, I grew mine as a teenager to try and look older. Yes. Uh, and it was fairly wispy. I was trying hard to grow it. Uh, <laughs> It looked like an Amish beard, like the oh. Pennsylvania <laughs> religion. Nice and, it was only, and, and no moustache. Yes. And for older viewers, it like Harry Messel, the professor. He had one like that. So <laughs> in my early days, I did that. Then I grew the whole, the whole lot. And now I'd, I'd, I'd never take it off again. Never. Well, it is a look. Do, do you think it's benefited you to be known for, for that look? I, I think so, because once I was in Sydney walking past a bus years ago and was when I had the Hinge program uh, here on 7. And... Uh, I walked past this bus and SBS had this huge slogan on the side of the bus with my beard, no face, just <laughs> my beard, and it, and, and it said, SBS, current affairs without the fluff. <laughs> there you go. And I thought, what fantastic. Everyone looked and said, oh, that's Darren Inch, you know? So it, did, it backfired on them. But yeah, when I was younger, I used to joke and just say, oh, why do you grow a beard? I'm not old enough to shave, you uh -huh. know, mm. like that. Um, I don't dye my hair. Believe, it's despite an despite the, head of hair. The, the Ray Martin rumors, <laughs> I don't dye my hair. Uh, but I do touch. Have, I have my beard touched up occasionally because when I was the host, the narrator on Rocky Horror, mm. they had to dye my beard jet black and put white stripes through it and all sorts oh of stuff. Goodness. Oh wow! And, and then my then wife said, oh, "I like that, so not the black one." So mm. I, I you know, touch up the little bits of the, around the edges a bit. You know. Mm. Well, right now hipster beards are the trend. What do you think about? <laughs> that? Oh look, the, the, well, the Ned Kelly beard I loathe. <laughs> I think if you have got a beard, I mean, some of them down here. You know, like mm. bird's nest, you know, this yeah. thing. Um, if, I think if your beard is, 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 is neat and trimmed, and, and I, could, I, could shave, I shave every day, I could do it blindfolded because uh, you just, just know where it all is. You know? and, Darren, you founded the Justice Party in 2016. Yeah. We don't see many male politicians with beards. Why is that? Oh, they probably think it's wrong. Look, um, the Justice Party, I was, I was shocked that... Um, I, we didn't, I didn't get re-elected. I'd be surprised at that and very disappointed. I'll, I'll be back. Yeah. Um, um, somebody said, you've got to try again. I said, yeah. They said, you're too old. I said, hang on, I'm younger than Joe Biden, and by 22, 20, 22, he'll be the President of the United States, so I can then become a senator. And get <laughs> I was mean, the oldest senator ever elected the last time, yeah. so just keep the record rolling. Mm. Now, Darren, uh, on to other more serious yes. things. You've had a well-publicised and, uh, publish, and successful fight with liver cancer. Yes. How is your health now? Oh, great. I had, uh, had a liver transplant, and uh, I take three pills a day. I take mm. so many vitamins. Jared, I've taken so many vitamins. I've got, I've got, I've got, the, I've got the, you know, the most expensive urine in Australia. Uh, but <laughs> I take three pills a day and I call them my Elvis pills because they're anti-rejection pills. <laughs> right? And I call them Elvis pills because they're designed to fool my brain into thinking that Elvis hasn't left the building. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, on the show, we're always talking about men's health. We're always trying to support it as much as possible. Do you think we've seen a shift in the way men relate to each other? Yes, look, I was, um, yes, watching this, what you've done on the show today about prostate cancer, you know, mm. I call it the lying down disease. Because mm. most of us always got prostrate. And you could tell, you'd agree with this, most men 
don't die from prostate cancer, they die with prostate mm. cancer. Mm. Um, but I think men are becoming far more aware. Uh, this thing about that, that men are too scared to go to the doctors, that is changing dramatically. Mm. Maybe my father's generation, your mom, with a doctor, I'm like Pavlov's dog. If they tell me to do something, I do it. You know, I mm. listen to them all the time. And I, and I think, and the next generation will be, will be even better at it. So mm. it, is, it is changing and people are being more open about it. And so you should be. Yeah. Mm. It's the only body you've got, you know, and uh, so look after it. Darren, good luck with the re-election campaign. Look forward to seeing more more of you on Sky Thanks, News, uh, Darren Hinch. The, the last time he and I were together was on Triple M. That's right. In Melbourne. Mm. It's good to <laughs> see you again, Darren. You're looking great. And who would back against Darren Hinch uh, becoming a senator again for the second time? Thanks, we'll be mate. back with more on the House of Wellness right after the Thank break. You. Before the break, Joe, we're talking beards, and it's fair to say that nearly every barista that I come across is rocking a beard these days. Yeah, it is almost mandatory. If you make coffee, you have to have a beard. I know I have one. <laughs> some kind of growth on your face. <laughs> what intrigues me is the maintenance. So here with the lowdown is Tom, a professional barista from Black Velvet here in Melbourne. Nobody teaches you beard maintenance skills. Bearded men quite often ask each other for tips on how to take care of your beard. I was in an Uber on the way to work this morning and the taxi driver was a sick Indian gentleman and he was asking for me for tips for my beard. Thank you. Cheers, Igor. So to take care of my beard, it's just a simple matter of like twice a week when I wash my hair, shampoo and condition my beard and about once a week I just rub a little bit of coconut oil through it. Really helps to take care of the moisture in the beard, help take care of the skin underneath. But I'll tell you what, when you shave it off, you're instantly freezing cold, even in summer. Bearded men definitely make better partners. The beard became before the girlfriend, so, you know, I think it's part of the charm. And I don't think she'd argue either. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Wow. Well, Tom's had his beard for only six years. Can you believe that? Six years growth. Interestingly, his dad always had a beard and the only time he ever saw him without one is when he shaved it off for surgery. God, it's like meeting a whole new person, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it something. would be. The big reveal. <laughs> well, it's been a jam-packed uh, special Father's Day show today. To all the dads out there, I want to say once again, have a happy Father's Day. And if you want more information on anything from today's show, then head to the House of Wellness website, houseofwellness.com.au. And don't forget to tune into our radio show, every Sunday and as always thanks to our good friends at Chemist Warehouse see you next time I want to see you in a beer yeah big, big net down the bottom right yeah. to your belly button <laughs> 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 <laughs>